What's up guys, welcome back to Flipping the Script Fishing. As temperatures cool and TVA prepares for the rainy season, the fishing below these hydroelectric dams really heats up. Predatory fish begin feeding up for the winter and all these small shad get pushed down right in front of them. You look for current seams and current breaks because that's where they'll be staging. And if you don't see schools of shad, keep moving until you do. You should see signs of feeding fish. So keep your head on the swivel and looking for these signs. Spot. I had two on at one time. I'm gonna try to see if we can't double up. another and by the way that was a Nico rigged four inch yum dinger um, and I was just dead sticking I just threw it out there and let it sit and he took it so, fortunately I can't find any more of those yum dingers I forget what I do with them but anyway we will find some we'll find something to catch them Carolina cranking it's a thing making it a thing nice spot that's it nice spotted bass check it out here's my weight my swivel line little Rapala it's a 
Hucks and down. I don't even know what that is. But it works. We'll catch some more. This time. Especially you guys that that fish on really that fish hold really deep in the reservoirs like those highland reservoirs and stuff. I bet this thing would just kill them. So you need to try it out. I want to I want to know how it works everywhere. I recently put out a video detailing this technique, so please check that out. The link will be provided in the description of this video. up a little bit, get us up a little white bass. trip if I don't get a catfish. Channel cat, that Carolina crank. <laughs> Always good for a catfish. After catching a couple fish on that Carolina cranking technique, I decided to try these current seams with an Alabama rake. But as the sun gets high, sometimes these fish don't want to chase as much. So sometimes you have to use a technique that's slow, methodical, where you can pick apart cover that they might be holding close to. Once I was satisfied that they weren't hitting the Alabama rig currently, I decided to pick up a Nico rig, except a slightly modified one.
Get a release on this one. <laughs> Alright, let's see if there's another one. Pick this out. A little bit of modified Nico. It's deep here, current's real strong, so I need more weight. So I use a screw lock and I put a little drop shot weight on there. Gets down there, works real well. So hopefully we can catch another one. If you're interested in this technique, I also did a video on this one not too long ago. The link will also be in the description at the end of the video. On that heavy Nico right here. Lighten the, I lightened it a little bit. I might go back to the heavier one. We'll see. Now this technique is typically very snag resistant, but the heavier the weight you put on there, the more likely you are to get hung up on whatever's down on the bottom. The good thing about this heavier Nico rig is you can throw it in some pretty turbulent areas and fish it decently. But like is the case normally behind dams, you never know what you're going to get.
Australia. As the sun got closer to the horizon, I decided to go back to the Alabama rig and focus on big eddies with sharp depth changes. In this technique, I do a controlled drift. I'd sit in the current just outside the current seam and throw into the slack water. Throw the umbrella rig to any irregularities I saw along the bank, anything that might hold a fish. I'd slowly retrieve the umbrella rig past that irregularity back to the boat. Many times the bite is very obvious, but oftentimes it will knock slack in your line and you need to reel up that slack and set the hook. spot. I've gotten several hits on this A-Rig, but that was the first one I've caught in a while. The great thing about this umbrella rig is it can be fast action. Unfortunately, you catch a lot of small fish, but you always have that chance at a giant. From mid-fall all the way into mid-winter, these three techniques can consistently help you put fish in the boat. As temperatures wildly fluctuate and water levels also fluctuate, these are the few techniques that are consistent on a regular basis. They help you adequately cover the water column and help you tackle the obstacles posed by moving water. These three techniques will help you not only catch bass, but all sorts of species. So next time you find yourself below the dam, try them out. I believe they'll help you. That's a wrap.